Hello and welcome to this episode of the Portion Perfection Professional Weight Management Series, where we bring you the best ideas and strategies in the industry. I'm Amanda Clark, author and creator of Portion Perfection, a visual weight control plan using actual plates, bowls and other tools that make it easy to eat the right amount. Joining me today is weight management psychologist Georgie Beams. Welcome, Georgie. Hello. Thank you for having me, Amanda. Yeah, you're most welcome. Now, we hosted a, a similar webinar um, together about 18 months ago, and it really blew people's minds to, ex to experience the effects of this quite odd technique, I have to say, that you're going to show us through today with the aim of curbing cravings. I can actually recall last time that we had about 50 people live and... Uh, you know, I think there was maybe one or two people who didn't experience the effect, but 48 out of 50 really felt it. So it's not fail safe, but it's certainly got a great hit rate. And I think the timing of today's webinar fits in with the goal of reducing sugar intake. And I think a lot of people feel out of control with sugar, but this technique works equally well for other food cravings, doesn't it? Absolutely. And um, yeah, whether that today and and um, and I want to make this as interactive as possible. So feel free to also come into the chat and, and come and say hi and, and let us know where you're from. And today we're going to really focus on um, whatever it is for you. So it might be the, the sugar, it might be those salty snacks, it might be yeah alcohol as well. So um, whatever it is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, to facilitating this process for you as well. Yeah, great. Uh, alcohol is something that I wondered about. I, I knew that this can work really well for those salty, crunchy things and for chocolate. Um, how does it work for alcohol? Alcohol, um, so I've had many clients over the years with this same request for alcohol, um, and we have done this exact process. It is a little different because alcohol is is, um, is a little bit different from a from a, a, a brain perspective, um, particularly sort of after drinking and the numbing out process, et cetera. So it's still going to work well, but there might be some other things for alcohol that would be beneficial to to look at and explore as well. Right. Okay. Um, Georgie, I wonder if to get started, uh, you might share your story about how you got into this field. Yes. So I have been working in this field for over 10 years with women in the area of eating and weight. Um, I'll share shortly my own personal journey because it's something very dear to my heart in, in terms of my own struggles in the past with my eating and weight. So I, I totally get it. I've gone through it myself. And so I just wanted to, um, you know, I feel passionate about this area and, um, and, and wanted to have a core focus with eating and weight. And then I actually fell into the area of weight loss surgery. Um, and, you know, and then I developed a passion for this area because I could see that there were so many women out there that needed more support in their journey. Right. And so, yes, now your, your business generally focuses on um, bariatric surgery but yes. this is a skill that applies for everyone. And, you know, to, to be honest, I think um, cravings and a lot of the a lot of the issues experienced by people at a high body weight are a spectrum. So, you know, people at normal weight can relate to the same situation. Weight is not necessarily a, an indicator of how in control you feel with food. So um, exactly. yeah, looking forward to this. So just in terms of housekeeping, um, if everyone could make sure that you remain on mute, um, please find the uh, the chat um, function. Yeah, should we check it off? Uh, well, I'll, I'll start it off. I'll just write hi in the chat so everyone can see. Yeah, maybe where it tell is. us where you're tuning in from. And I'll keep an eye on the questions in the chat. And uh, I'll be sure to ask them at the end. Oh, fantastic. Hey, Susan from Lismore. Fantastic. Yeah, so feel free to um, please encourage you to use the chat. We're particularly going to use the chat functionality um, when we go through this actual rewiring process. So I can get an indication of, of where you're at with your um, cravings. Um, hey, Cassandra. Hey, Rosalind. Hey, yeah, Nara from Coolangatta, Kelly, Beverly. Fantastic. Welcome, welcome. 
Um, and welcome to those watching the replay as well. So I know there'll be many of you that will be catching this and it doesn't matter if you're doing it live or the replay, it's still going to have that same effect. So in terms of the agenda, this is what we're going to cover off in the session today. Why willpower doesn't work, um, how dieting leads to weight gain, not loss. I'm sure um, you know, Amanda has gone through um, a lot of this information with you um, as well. Why rewiring works. And then I'm going to share with you more information about EMDR, which is my signature process. Then we're going to have the experience where we do it together. So I want you to start to think about what that craving looks like and we're going to get very specific around it. So as I mentioned, if it's the chocolate at 9 p.m. at night, if it's um, picking while you're cooking, um, you know, it might be just picking off the kids' plates, um, you know, at 5.30 in the afternoon. So just start to just turn your attention to that specific habit that you want to work on today. Then um, we're going to the rewiring together. Um, I'm going to share with you the research that I have conducted with the tools, these rewiring tools that I use. And I presented this research last year um, at a conference and I had um, over a hundred other psychologists live. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and so I'm excited to share that and just a bit of a teaser there um, with the particular research that I conducted, these women um, actually released two kilos in just seven days of using these um, tools. So I can't wait to share that with you. And then next steps and an opportunity for those to, that want to continue. So let's start off talking about eating. Um, and I liken it to an onion, um, an onion with many layers. Like we know that there is no quick fix. Um, I wish I could tell you that there was, um, but there isn't. And, uh, and most clients that I have seen over the years have really struggled with their eating since childhood. So chances are you might be in the same boat of struggling with your eating for many, many years, if not decades. And psychology really does play a critical role in eating and weight. And I want to let you know, and to start with that, it is not your fault, because when I was in the middle of my struggle with my eating and weight, um, I used to think that it was all me. And I used to blame myself. I used to personalize it and internalize it. And I used to think something was wrong with me. And, you know, I could do all be successful in all these other areas of my life, but not this was the one area that I could never get on top of. Um, it's not your fault. This, um, as I said, it, it, this area is extremely complex um, and there are patterns over time and uh, the habits are created. Um, and this has to do, in, in my personal and professional um, opinion, with partly to do with the wiring in your brain and re on um, repetitive mode. And that's where the rewiring tools can really help you to break that pattern, to break that um, wiring, to break that circuit in your mind that can lead to natural control around food. Now, um, we know the iceberg analogy, which is 10% of us um, up here. This is our conscious mind. This is up here. Um, any time that we are dieting, um, any time we are counting, um, calculating calories, um, even weight loss surgery itself um, taps into this conscious mind. Um, however, it, our eating sabotage happens outside of our conscious awareness. This is why this area is so complex because um, it's under the surface uh, and there's many layers to it as well. So what I love about EMDR um, and the other evidence-based tools that I use is that they also work uh, at the subconscious level as well. So it makes sense to actually have the strategies that match the same level of where the problem occurs. Now, this is what I've seen time and time again with willpower. Um, and I used to think this as well, just thinking, if only I had more willpower, um, why can't I just say no in the moment? And you might be feeling like, a driving force takes over in the moment where you just simply can't say no to the food. Um, and many of us are, are trying to rely on willpower, but it's a finite resource and it runs out at a point in time. So relying on willpower isn't a great longer term strategy. Um, and it's like working with a drained battery. So let's just say that nighttime eating is your thing at 9 p.m. at night, everyone's in bed, you're on the couch, the TV's on, you sit in the same seat every single time um, eating. Uh, you might wake up that morning at 7 a.m. and think, you know what, I'm going to be really strong tonight. I'm not going to eat the chocolate. You know, I'm going to be good. I'm just going to watch TV, no chocolate tonight. 
And then you go about your day and you've got pickups and drop-offs and, you know, all sorts of errands, work, whatever it is for you, um, dinner, clean up, and you get to the end of the day and it's nine o'clock at night and you're sitting in the same conditions and you're like, I'm done. Yeah. So with these rewiring tools, why I love them so much is because you no longer need to rely on willpower um, because these tools that we work with um, in your brain will start to give you that natural control around food. So um, as I've mentioned, or, or as Amanda's mentioned, um, a re registered psychologist, um, and that's six years um, of, uh, of, of training now. Uh, and I have over 10 years experience in eating and weight. Uh, I actually work in-house at a weight loss surgery clinic um, based in Melbourne. Um, I have an online program called NBT, which stands for Neurobariatric Transformation because in my professional opinion, um, often the surgery itself isn't enough for that longer term, um, longer term outcomes. Uh, I'm an author, so I have a book called Weight Loss Surgery Secrets, and I'm a podcaster called, and I've got a podcast called Reverse the Relapse, where we explore the deeper psychological reasons around why we, we keep sabotaging ourselves or why we continue to go back to the food. So this is my personal story. This was me back in the day. So I know what it's like to not feel in control. I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like um, to not feel good about yourself and to everything in life is filtered through the lens of eating and weight. Um, and so this was me for many, many years. Um, I tried all the diets out there. I tried all the things. I tried all the boot camps. Um, and I really thought that if I could just find that one thing, <laughs> that one diet, um, and it would change everything. And then, you know, I'd meet a guy and then we'd get married and like, you know, life would live happily ever after and life would be perfect. That was in my mind as the fantasy. But what happened in reality is I just kept getting fatter and fatter over time and feeling worse and worse about myself and feeling like a real failure. So we all know that definition of insanity of doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. I think I just woke up one morning and just thought, okay, this, there's gotta be something else. There's gotta be another way forward. Um, and then I, um, I, oh, shift the camera, sorry. Oh, up or down, is that better? Just, just give me one sec. There we go. <laughs> is that better? <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, and um, there's got to be a different way. So I went down the path of um, of psychology as well, seeing a psychologist. Um, and then I came across these tools. Uh, and yeah, they, they worked so well for me. Um, I did research on them. And uh, I have thousands and thousands of hours working with women, um, particularly in the area of weight loss surgery, who have also used these tools with the most amazing transformations and the research um, supports these outcomes as well. So this is my mission. Um, and it's the, in my mind, the eating and weight are often the symptoms. Um, what I'm really passionate about is doing this work, but helping women to really step into their power um, around food and in their life by rewiring their brain so they can start living. Um, so we know when we struggle with eating and our weight, often we are up in our head. And when we're up in our head, we're an observer in our life. Um, I'm all about really doing this work where we're in our body, living in the present moment, feeling more connected to ourselves, to our loved ones, stepping into our potential, stepping into our power. That's what light, lights me up. Uh, that's been my journey as well. And so that's this is my personal mission to help other women do the same. And to also stop the generational patterns, because I see that as a huge theme over the years with, with many clients. If I had a dollar every time a client said to me that their mother took them to Weight Watchers at the, at the age of 10. So I think it's also, you know, we, we have a choice around stopping the generational patterns and um, not passing this down um, as well to, to family members. So um, let's start with dieting. Um, and I know you would know this with Amanda, but um, just a bit of a refresh that science tells us that um, dieting leads to weight gain in the future. So there's a great saying, which is if you wanna gain weight, start dieting. 
And here's some research here, which compares um, weight loss with using dieting and exercise for weight loss purposes only versus rewiring your brain. So we can see here when we only um, are using diet and exercise to lose weight, we have a higher preoccupation with food and binging. It affects our mental health, um, increased dieting mindset, and it leads to weight gain and regain. Whereas rewiring um, actually leads to reduced for food thoughts and cravings. So we're we can actually get out of our head. So we know what it's like to be so consumed um, and we can actually you know, start living our life. Um, it, it positively impacts our mental health and it leads to weight loss and maintenance, which is why I love these tools and the research behind them. So EMDR, um, it stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. No one ever remembers that. <laughs> so it took me like a couple of years to like um, to, to remember that. It is quite a mouthful. Um, but this is what we're going to focus on today. Um, and I'm going to share my screen where I've got an app and we're going to start to facilitate that process. It's extensively researched. It's a very powerful psychological treatment that's been used effectively for over 30 years. Um, I've used many, many tools. Um, I've been in therapy myself and I've had many tools used with me. Um, and this is, professionally speaking, this is one of the most effective tools that I have seen and experienced with the thousands of hours that I have working um, in this space with weight loss surgery patients in the area of food and weight. So I'm really excited to, to share it with you today. EMDR is endorsed by the Australian Psychological Society, the American Psych Psychiatric Society Association, lots of different professional boards and associations. Now, you may have had ex um, experience using EMDR if you have been in therapy around traumatic memories, and it's definitely a gold standard for that. I have been trained in a specific protocol, and then I've developed even my own protocol, which is the research that I've done that I'll sh show you, um, share with you soon. Um, in the area of food cravings. And we're going to today start to take the positive emotion or the desire to eat this particular food or the desire to drink, whatever you are working on, out of it. We're going to start to separate it out. Um, and we're using it for educational purposes today. So um, with this particular protocol, what, it, um, what it's about is we have paired, um, so, so if you feel like there's a certain food or drink um, that has the power over you that you can't say no in the moment, what that means is that um, we have actually paired and um, connected a positive feeling into that food or drink. And so what we are really craving is actually the feeling rather than the food or the drink. So we've made a positive association with that food and with that drink. And this is why we want to look at our patterns. And this is why we often have specific patterns over time with specific food or a specific drink. And what we're going to do with EMDR is we're going to take this positive association that's locked in. So you've locked in this positive feeling into the food and we're going to separate it out. And when we separate it out, your brain starts to lose interest in this food. And when your brain starts to lose interest in the food, we have no cravings. And when there's no, cra no cravings, there's no problems because you can get on with your day, you can get on with your evening. Um, so as I mentioned, we're craving the feeling, we're not craving the food. So I want you to already start to consider what is the feeling that you are trying to get met um, from this food or this drink? Now, the most common one um, for many women that I work with is relaxation. Um, nighttime eating is another, um, a big theme as well that comes through. And so what can happen is we get to the end of the night, the 9 p.m. situation, we're alone, everyone's in bed. And what we might be craving is actually that me time. We might be cr um, craving that relief, that relaxation, that everything has been about everyone else all day. And this is my one chance where it's about me. But what we've done is we've locked all those feelings into the food. And of course, the food can't give us that. <laughs> the, the alcohol can't give us that, whatever you're working on. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it's quite helpful to, first of all, understand just with that awareness, what is the feeling that you've locked in? Um, and you can feel free to share that in the, in the chat as well. What, is, what do you believe is playing out for you? Is it relief? Is it relaxation? Is it me time? Is it fun? Like fun can be another one. 
actually fun and alcohol can be quite um, related as well. Um, is it safety? Is it comfort? So start to, um, and, and feel free to share that in the chat. So as I mentioned, um, EMDR is an evidence-based tool and I'm accredited to use it with a specific eating and weight protocol that we are going to go through together. And I've got thousands and thousands of hours um, using this tool as well over the years. So let's start in the chat. I'm just going to open it up. I can see some of that reward switching off. Yeah, absolutely. Numbing, yes. Yep, that's right. Um, that's it, Rosalind, a reward. Fantastic. So let's pop in the chat. What is your specific target that you're going to work on today? And I want you to get as specific as you can. So I'll give you some examples here. Is it 3 p.m. and you go for a chocolate cupcake? Or is it 3 p.m. and you go for a vanilla cupcake, right? <laughs> so if you can, if, um, if there is a specific pattern for you, I want you to get as specific as possible. Is it 9 p.m. chocolate watching TV? And again, is it a certain brand of chocolate? So is it Cadbury's or is it fruit and nut? Is it a specific ice cream or is it just any ice cream? Maybe it's 10 p.m. at night, chips in bed. Is it salt and vinegar? <laughs> is it just normal chips, uh, potato chips? Maybe 6 p.m. picking whilst cooking. And maybe that's not so specific, but it's just the habit of picking whatever it is that you're cooking. Now, there'll be two categories here that I just want to talk about. So the first category will be you if there is that specific um, pattern of eating. So for some of you, it will be 9 p.m. at night, fruit and nut chocolate, or 9 p.m. at night, chocolate in general. For others, it might be more of a snacking. So you might be um, have a habit of snacking all day. So it's almost like once you start snacking, you can't stop. And if that's the case, as we go through the processing, I want you to get specific on that target. So if you're a snacker, I want you just first of all to consider, is there a worst time of day for your snacking? So maybe you started at 10 a.m. in the morning. Is 5 p.m. the worst time? Or is 9 p.m. at the worst time? Now, if all of the times are roughly the same, I want you to use the first time you start snacking. So that will be 10 a.m. So I'm just gonna go over that one more time. Um, so you'll either have a very specific um, target for a specific food at a specific time, like fruit and nut chocolate, 9 p.m. at night. Or if you're a snacker, you're going to select your worst snacking time of the day or your first um, snacking time of the day. All right, it's very, this is all part of the setup here. <laughs> um, so the first thing we're going to do is take a mental sort of image or photograph of you doing this thing. So I'm just going to use this particular example of nighttime. So if this was you, it would be 9 p.m. at night, the TV's on, everyone's in bed, you're sitting in the same seat um, on the couch and you've got the chocolate in front of you. Now, what's important is you haven't yet had your first bite. So this is about anticipating that first bite, imagining what that first bite is going to taste like. So it's almost like this, um, this is going to be, for many of us, like a little bit of excitement, you know, a positive um, feeling as you are about to have that first bite. So you haven't yet had your first bite. So I just want to um, make that clear to start with. Um, and we want that craving or that desire to eat or that desire to drink, whatever you're working with, to be around an eight, nine or 10 out of 10. So with any craving, there is a feeling in the body. So it might be salivation in the mouth um, as you are anticipating or thinking about that first bite. It might be some tension or a pull in the stomach. You might feel it all over. So the first thing we wanna do is see the image in your mind and it doesn't matter that you're not in the situation at the moment because you're this is the beauty of our our mind it doesn't know the difference that it's um as you see it in your mind the mind doesn't know that it's not 9 p.m at night so it's still going to work so take the mental photograph when you've got the image of you about to eat the food or about to drink the drink where you can feel that desire to eat or desire to drink to be an eight 
nine or 10 out of 10. So what I want you to do is pop in the chat, how strong is that desire to eat or desire to drink? So just give me a number on a scale of one to 10, just so I make sure everyone's all good to go before we move on. So I would, um, for you, Beverly, let's go with that terrible night. So I want you to really dial it up. Yeah, go with, go with that eight, nine, 10 out of 10. So imagine it's that terrible night for you. Kelly's got a nine, Cassandra's got a seven, an eight for Kathy. Good, good, good. Snack after dinner around 8 p.m. Yep, fantastic, eight out of 10. And I want you just to be really aware of where you feel it in the body. So what is it that you love about this food? So is it, you know, if it's the chocolate, is it melting in the mouth? Is it that burst of sweetness? If it's the chips, is it the crunch? Is it the salt? What is it for you? So I want you just to really focus in on that. And where do you feel that in your body? I want you to, everyone to be salivating. <laughs> now that we got that, we just need the final ingredient. We want to match the words to this particular food. So I want you to see that photograph, that mental image, and I want you to feel that desire to eat or desire to drink in the body, that eight, nine, 10 out of 10 feeling. What are the words that go with the feeling and the image? And these are some examples. I need this, or is it I love this? Is it I deserve this? Or this will taste good, or this will feel good, or it could be something else. These are just here, just as a bit of a guide. So pop your words in the chat. Yeah, I love the taste. That makes me feel good. Yeah, fantastic, Teresa. A lot of, a lot of reward, a lot of deserving this. That's very, very common. Feeling calm. Yeah. So you might say, I feel calm and naughty. I feel calm and a little bit naughty. Yeah, I need this. Yeah, I love this. This will make me feel happier. Yeah. Yep, even in the short term. Yeah, this tastes good. Fantastic. So we've got three things happening here. We have that mental image that we're going to work with, with the EMDR processing. We have the desire to eat or the desire to drink, whatever you're working on, that's going to be an eight, nine, 10 out of 10. And now we've got the words that match it, okay? All right, now, if, um, just a reminder, for those of you that are using um, more of a general sort of snacking, you'll be using your worst um, snacking time or first snacking time. So that will be your mental image. So just making sure, um, sure that you've got that. All righty. Okay, so we're going to prepare to rewire. We're going to practice some eye movements to start with. So I'm just going to share my screen. And what I might do, I might just make this a little slower to start with. And we're moving, there's a green dot and a black screen and it's moving on a diagonal. And we're just right now just getting comfortable with these eye movements. So maybe it doesn't matter if you wear glasses or not, you can play around with glasses on or glasses off. Just get comfortable with it. If you are on your phone, what I recommend is that you just, you. Um, um, with your eye movements, just extend them out beyond the phone, just so you get a really good range there. And we'll do the other side if that feels all good. Go. Just getting comfortable, nothing you need to do here. Alrighty, I'm going to speed it up for the next round. So we are ready to process and it's meant to be hard. So that's, that's the first thing <laughs> that, I, that I want to say is that we're doing many things at the same time and it's going to feel hard, okay? Um, it's like we're, we're taxing, uh, we're really focusing and, and, and taxing out our brain. So you're going to see the image in front of you. So almost like in front of your computer here or just in front of you here of you about to eat or about to drink. Yeah, that mental snapshot, that 
um, mentor photograph that we have. You're going to keep it here as well as we do this processing. Then you're going to place your awareness into your body as to where you feel that desire to eat or desire to drink. So I want you to really turn it up, dial it up, get an eight, nine, 10 out of 10. I want you to be salivating. I want you to be anticipating what is that first bite going to taste like? Well, that first sip, how's that going to taste? And you're looking forward to it. You want it, right? Then you're going to say your words. And if you can say them out aloud, that would be great. Then you're going to say, you know, like, I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this because you do. <laughs> so just feel into those words, okay? If you can't say it out loud, that's totally fine. Just do the same internally. And then you're going to follow the dot at the same time. So mental image in front of you, desire to eat or desire to drink, eight, nine, 10 out of 10, be aware of what's happening in your body and say your words over and over and follow the dot at the same time. Let's give it a go. We're speedy, speeding it up as well. Go for it. Now, want everyone just to take a nice deep breath in and out and let that go. Let's try the other side. Same again. I want you to take another deep breath in and out. Let that go. We're going to do one more round and then we're going to check in. Big breath in, big breath out. Let that go. So what we're going to do is check in. So I want you to bring up your image and just get a sense of how strong that desire to eat or desire to drink is. Just a sense and pop it in the chat, scale of one to 10. Don't overthink it. <laughs> just go with whatever, whatever you, just a sense, whatever you feel it is. There's no right or wrong here. Good, good. Fantastic. Excellent. All right, let's keep going. We're going to do a few more rounds. So we're going to do exactly the same again. I'm just going to speed it up a little bit more. Just give me one second. Doing really well. Go for it. Big breath in, big breath out. Let's do the other side now. Go for it. Same again.
get a big deep breath in and out and let that go. So let's bring up that mental image again. What are you noticing? And what are you starting to notice that's changing in there? So perhaps you feel a little bit more removed from it, a little bit more distance here. It's harder to bring up. Maybe the desire to eat has reduced even more. So yeah, image is fading. Yeah, exactly. So how strong is the desire to eat or desire to drink in there now? Pop it in the chat. Great, Susan. Sometimes what can happen, you take it or leave it. You can start to feel a bit indifferent. Um, some um, participants sort of say, oh gosh, I was salivating before and now I just feel a bit, I've got like this funny flavor in my mouth or it feels, you know, it's like this sensation of it's sickly sweet. I don't want it anymore. Doesn't look so good. Yeah, absolutely. So the next part of this is we're going to install what I call your version 2.0 image. So version 1.0 is the, those old habits, those old behaviors that no longer serve you. Your 2.0 self and your 2.0 habits are um, really about you thriving. Like what is it that you want? Yeah, rather than so often we focus what we don't want. So what, what do you want? So if you were no longer eating at 9 p.m. at night, what's the new image of what you wanna see instead? Maybe it's reading a book, maybe it's the TV off, maybe it's going for a walk, maybe it's having a hot shower or a bath, drinking water. Yeah, pop it in the chat. What does 2.0 you look like in this moment? And we want it to be something that feels really empowering. Because as we know, eating or drinking in that way feels disempowering. So what feels really empowering for you? Knitting, fantastic. Cup of tea, yeah. Painting instead of TV, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Reading, yes. Going to bed earlier, yeah, that's another big one as well, right? The longer we stay up, often that is that bigger window for our these version 1.0 sort of snacking behaviours. Getting lunch ready, yeah. And, yeah, and then going to bed, Susan, and feeling good about that. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing, it's thinking about what would I feel proud? Like, what would I feel really good about, you know, going to bed tonight? What do I want that to look like? So what we're gonna do now is install this new image. So what we're going to do is in front of your computer screen or in front of your phone, is see yourself doing this thing. So um, Susan is gonna see herself preparing lunch for the next day. Um, Nara is going to see herself going to bed earlier and feeling really good about it, feeling really empowered. Cassandra is going to see herself reading, okay? So see a new version 2.0 image of how you want to be, yeah? And I want you to focus on in the body how good that feels. It feels empowering. This is who you truly are. This is what you want. Imagine going to bed, like feeling proud of yourself. So you're going to have that positive, empowering feeling in your body. Try to get that up to an 8, 9, 10 out of 10. Imagine there's a little dial there and we're going to keep turning that positive feeling up. And let's come up with some words. So what do you want to say about yourself? Here, it might be something like, I can relax without the food. Or I make great choices. I can do this. So pop in your positive words into the chat. What is it that you want to say about yourself that's really going to anchor in those positive feelings that go with this new image? Yeah, I'm taking care of me. I love that. I can do this and it's much better for me. Even you could say, Elizabeth, I can do this and I feel fantastic. Try to, we can just make it a little bit more positive there. Yeah. And if you didn't need this, what is it that you, let's, um, with Nara, let's have focus on what we want rather than what we don't want. So if we can flip it around, what are the positive words? What does that mean for you? If you, don't, if you didn't need this, what does it mean for you now? Yeah, I'm in control deep within my psyche. I love that, Beverly. Yeah, wow, no guilt. Yeah. Yeah. It would say, wow, I feel so empowered. Yep, fantastic. 
Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could say, um, Nara, I love going to bed early with my husband. Yeah. I feel so, you know, I make great decisions. Yeah. Fantastic. Love that, Susan. Excellent. So let's install it. So um, hold the image in front of you here of version 2.0, what you want. Focus in on the empowered, positive feeling in the body as you see yourself being this person, because this is what you truly want. And then say your words over and over and really feel into those words. Like Ros Rosalind is going to say, you've got this. You have got this. You've really got this. Okay, so I want you to feel into it. All right, go for it and enjoy it. <laughs> Now imagine there's a little dial. I'm going to turn up that feeling now, turn up that positive feeling now. That's it. Hold on. No. Big breath in, big breath out. And we'll do one more on the other side. Same again. Just focusing on how good it feels. That's it. Turn up that dial on that feeling a little bit more. Good. Fantastic. Big breath in, big breath out. Well done. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat. How are you feeling now? What does this mean for you? this new way forward and new approach. And how cool is the mind? <laughs> it's amazing. We can see the power, right? With our cravings, with our relationship with food. The mind plays such a critical role here. Yeah, more positive. Yeah, I feel more in control. I need to give it a go. Yeah, I can do this, yeah. Yeah, I was going to go to the shops to get chocolate, but now I'm not going. I love that. <laughs> well done. Yeah, need to test it. Absolutely. And um, Amanda will be sending and the team will be sending out a replay. So another recommendation that I have is to also try this in the moment. So what I've found is that there's some people that have trouble and, it, and if this is you, then yeah, this is going to really help you too. Have trouble bringing up the visual image. Um, and if that's the case, wait till you're in the moment, okay, where you're on the couch, TV's on, and you've got the chocolate right in front of you, and get out your laptop or get your phone out and watch the replay and try it in that moment as well. Strongly, um, strongly recommend that. Fantastic. Any comments from you, Amanda, before we sort of switch gears there? Any observations? <laughs> no, I thought that was really great. Um, I wondered whether anybody who's here actually attended last time or if this is new to everybody. Let me know in the chat if you did attend last time. And I think that's really interesting, the, the trying it in the moment. And um, I think from last time, one of my clients mm -hmm. um, sat in and she was someone I'd been seeing on and off for many years. So I knew her very well. I knew what issues were coming up. And it was a desire for biscuits uh, at afternoon tea every afternoon. And she really struggled to change that. Um, and after coming to the session, she actually forgot about biscuits, just forgot about them for probably six months. And I saw her weight go lower than I've ever seen it. Um, but over time, kind of the idea came back that she knew that she liked them. So um so yes, I've been getting her to re-watch and when she's good at focusing on that, it goes again. It's amazing. Yeah, and this is exactly demonstrating that whole natural control, which feels very different from that forced control of the willpower and the dieting and that old version 1.0 way. So when we start to rewire our mind, we use our mind for us rather than against us. Um, and it's extremely powerful. And we know that a bit like we, 
um, your client, you mentioned Amanda, like that natural control can really lead to natural weight loss, which is, um, yeah, which is what I'm really focused on um, with the clients and participants that I work with. All right, so let me go back to the slides. All right, so we know, we covered that off. We know the power of rewiring. And I'm so glad that it's new to many of you because this is what I get excited about is, is definitely showing you a new way forward. Because as I mentioned, I know what it's like to feel powerless to your cravings, to feel lost, to not know what to do, but to get, also get into that rut of um, with the habits as, as well. And that can feel really disempowering and have a negative impact on our mental health. So EMDR for food cravings is one um, part of this puzzle, <laughs> this complex puzzle that we know of as eating. Um, and remember back to the onion, there are layers here as well. So I would love to tell you that it's um, it can be as simple as just doing that once um, and it's a set and forget and uh, and it's the answer to to everything and for some people it can be a bit like Amanda's client this can definitely work and there's six months of um, not thinking about the craving but for many um, other women as well they've struggled with this eating since childhood so there are many many layers there's many parts to this um, there can be many inputs as well. Um, and this is sort of after, um, this would be say a first session that I would do if you were to see me um, back in the day in the, in the clinic for one-on-ones. And then we'd focus on this next part, um, which I'll, I'll share with you. So what I've observed over the years is that there are 12 common subconscious blocks that can lead to sabotage. And I'd be very interested for you to share in the chat which ones you feel um, might be playing out for you. Um, as I said, this is all happening in the subconscious mind. Um, no one intends for this to happen, but yet we know that um, it does play a role and it has an impact with our eating and weight. And we're complex beings, right? We are very complex beings. So the first one is sabotage. So we all have these different parts of us where a part of us really wants to change, part of us wants to succeed, and there's another part of us that doesn't want us to change, that keeps going back to the food. Um, there's could be a failure um, story that might be um, also playing out as well, some programming, um, which I find is, is quite a common theme in this area, particularly for weight loss surgery patients. So that whole kind of push pull, and it creates this inner conflict. And when we have this inner conflict with these different parts, it's typically the part of us that doesn't want to change, that wins out and will take us back to the food. Another block is emotional eating. So this is where um, it might be, particularly for the snackers out there, once I start eating, I can't stop. Um, it can also be eating to numb out, eating to escape, um, eating um, to fill a void, um, overeating as well. There's, there's many clients that I've worked with that, that really are looking for that full feeling in their stomach, which um, you know obviously has challenges um, after weight loss surgery as well. Um, that is a, a sabotage block um, in there playing out. All or nothing thinking, this is an extremely common one where we either feel like a success or a failure. We're good or bad. We're in control or out of control. And this can be a very stressful way to live our life. Um, anything on the extremes. Uh, and what typically happens is that we spend more time being out of control than we do in control. And this can lead to weight regain and being in that rut and also negatively impacting our mental health as well. Weight as protection. So this is where I see um, excess weight um, in a subconscious way to keep you safe, keep you at arm's length. Um, this one can also be related to previous traumas in there, um, which would make sense, um, having that buffer in place. Um, but it also could be a visibility of not putting yourself out there and playing small um, and not really wanting to stand out and live up to your potential. This can also play out in terms of blaming our body. So um, I used to um, blame everything on my my weight that I didn't like about myself and, and my life. So our body can become a scapegoat for us here as well. Self-worth um, is, is quite a critical one in terms of how we feel about ourselves. And often what can happen is because 
this has been a struggle, this is a pattern over many years, um, self-worth can be dependent on weight. And what I mean by that is that you might release some weight and you feel good about yourself. And then you plateau or regain weight and then you don't feel good about yourself. And then you get on this sort of roller coaster. So it's like we put our self-worth externally um, onto our bodies. Identity, so an identity of a failure, um, that as I mentioned, like it's either the fear that I'm going to fail if I'm new, um, you know, um, on, on the journey of weight loss surgery or feeling like a failure um, if you're in that regain um, sort of, going through a regain, feeling like the big one. So feeling like you're the big one in, in the family or big one with your friends. So um, the identity is, is a key piece here. And perfectionism and procrastination. This is where um, often we put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect, have the perfect body and the perfect life and and uh, and, and all the things. And this, this pressure can lead to eating um, because we don't like, we don't deal with pressure very well from a subconscious perspective. And it can also lead to procrastination eating in there. So pop in the chat, which of them um, do you feel is your predominant? And yeah, and I can see Beverly saying all of these and um, that's why I've put together, these are the key themes because what I was finding in um, when I was at the weight loss surgery clinic is that everyone has their own um, background and experience, but the, the themes were all very, very similar. And I just kind of connected the dots on those themes. So it's very, very common to have a combination of these blocks if you have a pattern of eating, particularly that started in childhood remember the onion and those layers. And each of these blocks um, has a feeling and uh, an image. So here's an example here, I'm either on or I'm off and nothing in between. And when I'm off, I eat. And so um, EMDR is perfectly placed to find the origin for these, these subconscious sabotage blocks that might be getting in your way because you didn't wake up today with this block. Um, and then what we do is we use EMDR, we identify the origin and then we process it using EMDR. Um, and this can be extremely powerful. It can be extremely healing. Um, and we create a new template, a bit like what we did together of how you wanna be instead. So you get to choose that. <laughs> so these blocks are like um, entering a destination into your GPS. And what I found, and this is how I was as well, is that I was, inputting subconsciously the opposite destination of what I truly wanted. So I was inputting version 1.0 when truly I wanted version 2.0. So we can all have a conscious desire of, you know, I want to be slimmer. I want to get to my goal weight. But remember the iceberg, this is only 10% of who we are. The subconscious mind is in charge. Like this is 90% of who we are. So we have these subconscious sabotage blocks playing out such as I'm a failure with my eating and weight, this is what we're entering into our internal GPS system. And this is where I really um, help women to change. So if you have a sense that you've got some sabotage blocks, if you've got a pattern of eating, knowing that it's complex, um, and you really want to um, transform, you want to have that natural control, that sustainable change, then I just want to spend a few moments sharing more with you. So as I mentioned, I have an NBT program. It's a program for weight loss surgery patients. And I do have non-weight loss surgery patients in there that also identify with this area. Um, and it's, it's for you, if you're really ready to transform your relationship with, with food and your weight using this rewiring, um, using the rewiring tools. So you've had a taster of EMDR and what's possible. Imagine if we start to look at all these other blocks and also use EMDR to clear the past, to clear um, and almost like reset your internal GPS system to version 2.0. And 2.0 is about you thriving, you living your best life, feeling more connected, feeling more present. And for many um, weight loss surgery patients, they had hoped that weight loss surgery itself would step them into their 2.0 self. But we know that the surgery was on our stomach, not our mind. And this I feel is a really missing ingredient um, on the journey. So in the MBT program, there are 12 key eating and weight sabotage blocks um, that we process using uh, my EMDR specific protocol. 
there's six um, and, and sorry, just with those 12, there's what we went through before, all or nothing thinking, emotional eating, there's boredom eating, there's reward eating, there's sabotage, there's weight as protection, self-worth, identity, um, eating to rebel is another big one that, that comes through. And again, it's all happening subconsciously. So I've taken these themes and I've um, put it into a program with these evidence-based tools to, um, to clear it, to heal it and to transform, to put you on your version 2.0 path. We also have six live coaching calls with myself. Um, and these are um, complex, you know, we know sabotage is complex and there's many layers. So this is really advanced work. Um, and we use EMDR in those coaching calls um, to do some processing on sabotage that might be playing out for you because we know sabotage goes hand in hand with this area of eating and weight. It's not this sort of linear process and you just, you know, or it should probably should be like this, go down, down, down with weight, right? We know that it can be a little bit like this. We know that um, there are many reasons and that, that can impact um, your eating and weight as well. There are three sessions um, with our MBT psychologist, who's also EMDR therapist. So there's personalization and processing your unique sabotage blocks. So there's support and accountability there too. There's a, a tapping program that I've put together. So EFT tapping is another evidence-based tool. And so I've also created these 12 um, tapping blueprints and videos that continue to rewire your brain around these blocks. They're very comprehensive. Um, and uh, many women say it's like I'm in their, their head because part of it is identifying the right words and the right blocks. You just press play and, and go through this for about 10 to 15 minutes a day. There's three months access. I've got an MBT app. So I've got all the tools. So it's for busy women on the go. Um, there's effective daily tools for homework, including five minute tools that can collapse a craving from a 10 out of 10 to a three out of 10 in just five minutes. So I've collected data on that from MBT participants. Um, and there's free bonus materials around fear of failure. So if that's a block that's playing out for you. Um, and also tools to clear resistance and sabotage. Cause like I said, there's no perfect linear journey here. And plus you get the lifetime access to all these materials because I'm about empowering women um, in the longer term. So we know that life is, you know, all full of ups and downs, um, but these tools are going to really help you. Um, so you no longer need to rely on food um, and start to disconnect um, from that as well. So here's an example of the MBT app. So everything's at your fingertips um, and then you can make it work for you. So um, I do a, a school, oops, I do a school pickup um, and often I've got about 15 minutes waiting for my son um, outside school in the car. So you can make these tools work and they're literally the tools at your fingertips. So if you do, um, if you are interested, you've had a taster of it now and you've got a sense that um, of the complexity around the area of eating, the sabotage that can come in, the, the power of the mind, um, and you want to learn more about the program and to see whether it's going to be a good fit for you, then I invite you, um, and I think Amanda's going to pop the link in if she hasn't already, um, to apply and to book in a call um, with my team. Um, and they're going to share more information with you. So it's Angie um, who, who's taking those calls. And um, she, oh, hang on one second, I'll just go, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, she is going to find out some more information about your specific challenges and struggles and your patterns. Um, she's going to find out what version 2.0 looks like for you and what are some of your goals. And as a result of that conversation, she'll recommend whether the program is going to be a good fit and you get to choose. Um, so this is for you around that if you're wanting that natural control leading to natural weight loss and you really are ready to step into that best version of you. And because you come through Amanda <laughs> and her community, I want to give you an extra special bonus this week, which is I'm doubling the live sabotage calls with me. So you get to hop on live. We're going to do this um, advanced work together that is going to be so insightful. You're going to learn so much about yourself, but we're going to use EMDR to then process it. So um, it, it's yeah, incredibly powerful. So you get six months worth of live calls with me. Um, and that's over, um, that's 12 live calls over six months. So that is a fantastic opportunity. Plus you're gonna get double the time in the MBT app as well. So um, yeah, that's, it's a fantastic time. And then finally, I just wanna share some information about the, um, the study and the research that I've done on these tools in the MBT program. 
So it was with weightless surgery patients and, uh, and we gave them a questionnaire beforehand and they, was, they tried all the things, even surgery, and they're still struggling with their cravings, feeling powerless. Um, and then they, every day for seven days, um, they um, went through um, a particular protocol that I have developed. Um, and then we gave, we waited a week and then we gave them another questionnaire so we can actually start to compare um, before and after. And the results blew my mind, I've got to say, <laughs> in a really, in a really positive way. So what we found is that it was just seven days in a row of using these tools that these women had a 77% increase in their level of control over their cravings. Now, these tools were a combination of an EMDR protocol that I've developed, um, an EFT tapping uh, video and script, and some psychoeducation. So just explaining some information um, about cravings. Um, so they felt more in control, they felt more empowered and it positively impacted their mental health. So you can see down the bottom, they felt clear headed, they felt more active, energetic, more relaxed. So they felt more calm in themselves. Um, and it even decreased loneliness, which is amazing because we're just working on food cravings, right? And it had this amazing byproduct of, um, of supporting their mental health in a really positive way. Plus, they released two kilos. So this blew my mind. I was not expecting this. Um, I had a feeling and a sense that the mental health would improve because I had seen research um, on that with, with other tools, similar tools as well. But this was a, a fantastic side effect, a byproduct of doing this work, because this was not about weight loss. This was about food cravings. Um, so this was just seven days in a row. So um, this is the research conducted on these exact tools in the MBT program. Yes, yeah, so schedule a call if you want to learn more. Um, as I mentioned, Angie is going to talk through your eating weight challenges, identify your goals. She'll recommend MBT or another option for you, um, but we won't know until we um, talk with you. And we've put times aside this week specifically um, for Amanda's community um, to book in a call and, and find out more. And there's rebates available as well with one-on-one -on -one sessions and private health rebates also. So yeah, click the link and um, and that's it from me, Amanda, if there's any questions from you. Okay, great. Thanks, Georgie. Um, there is a question there about the cost. What are you able to tell us? And yeah, look, what I would suggest, Emily, is um, we don't know whether the program's going to be a good fit for you yet. And it may be that there might be something else that we can offer you instead. So what we want to do is um, a jump on the call. It, it's a, it's a um, no cost call and we'll go through, find out if it's good fit first, because that's something that's really important to us. Um, and then we'll give you all the details then. And then you get to choose. You, you, you get to choose whether it's the right um, the right program for you. Okay, great. If I could, Georgie, I just want to make a comment about some of the um, initial comments around dieting and just want to point out that all of those studies relate to deprivation and um, lack of flexibility, kind of restriction. And that's what really causes that rebound. And, um, you know, you probably know from psychological um, research that uh, just depriving someone of something makes them want to bust out. So it's a little bit different to what I do in Portion Perfection, that uh, what I'm aiming to do is give people ultimate flexibility and um, create a healthy kind of attitude and try and avoid the, um, the portion control traps because the more that's in front of us, the more we eat. And that's, that's that subconscious thing. Exactly. Excellent input. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. All right, so we know how to get in contact with you through that link. I'll also send out that link with the replay. Um, yeah, and try, and try the replay, try the EMDR in the moment is what I strongly recommend and yeah. be, be curious around that too. So valuable. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you very much, Georgie, for your time. I think you've done a bit of life changing here. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in watch out for details of our next episode invite your friends to join our mailing list to receive invitations to our free sessions um, you can just send them to our um, website greatideas.net.au and if you go slash menu plan then you can download a free seven-day portion control plan and that also gets you onto the invitation list if you're not already there 
Um, and if you take more of a look around the site, you'll find great tools for weight management with or without bariatric surgery and details of our courses. So until next time, take care. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.